Hey guys, welcome back to the Glide tutorial. We're now on episode 15 and we're gonna start taking a look at the way we can actually control the player. So the big idea behind this game is that we're gonna be using the accelerometer to actually control our plane, but it might actually happen that our user does not have one. So if he doesn't have one, we're gonna revert back to swipe controls. So we're actually gonna start by opening up the save state. And inside of the save state, uh, we're gonna be keeping a preference of the player. So does he enjoy uh, playing with the accelerometer more or does he wanna be using the swipe controls? At the very end down here, I'll be declaring a public bool called using accelerometer. And let's put that on true by default because we want the user to experience it the way we are. we're making it for accelerometer basically. So, Let's just put that on true by default. And if he doesn't like it, he can actually turn it off on the menu. We're gonna have an option for that really, really soon. However, it might actually occur that the user does not have a accelerometer on the phone. So to actually check this out, we're gonna go in the save manager. At the very beginning here in the awake, we're gonna go down here and say, are we using the accelerometer meter and can we use it? So if state dot using accelerometer and we're not able to use it so not system dot info actually system info um, supports accelerometer so if the system does not support and we're actually saying that we're using it then we really can't use it because we don't have any uh, so if we can't make sure we're not trying next time so we're going to say state using accelerometer is equal to false and let's also save right away so we don't get the same problem uh, next time we boot the game. All right, so now we're gonna move on to actually creating those controls and the controls are going to be made in the manager script. The reason I'll be making them here is so I can access from pretty much everywhere and all the inputs are centralized basically. So down here, I will be creating a public vector three and I'll call this get player input. Now, depending on if you're using the accelerometer or not, we're gonna be having two different branches in here. So first, are we supporting the accelerometer? Actually, are we using is a better word here. So are we using this thing that I can't pronounce like 12 times? Uh, if we are, well, actually, let's do save manager instance state using accelerometer. All right, so if we made it in here, that means we can actually use it. So if we can use it, replace the Y parameter we get because that's gonna be uh, given to us in a vector three by the Z because we do not need that Y. I'll explain to you what goes on here. Uh, we're gonna declare a vector three, call it A or something really temporary basically. Uh, and we're gonna get the input acceleration. Then we're gonna say A dot Y is going to equal A dot Z. Basically, when we're gonna be holding our phone, we don't really want to know um, how tilted it is on the Y axis. We only want to be using the X and the Z axis. The reason I'm actually moving this here is because when we do swiping on the screen, the swiping actually use X and Y, and I want to be making sure all my inputs are centralized, basically. So I'm going to be storing the input of the accelerometer in X and Y as well. So let's just do a return A right here. So this is what we do if we are using the accelerometer. Now, if we're not, we're gonna be reading all touches. So read all touches from the user. Then declare a vector three R. That's gonna be a zero at the beginning. So vector three zero. And then for each touches, so for each touch, I would just call touch in input dot touches. And now for every single one of those, we're gonna be storing them in a dictionary if we click and we're gonna be removing them from that same dictionary if we remove our finger. Um, to have this work, we first need a dictionary. So I'll just be grabbing these two here, move them up because they annoy me, and we are going to be declaring a private dictionary, int, and also vector2. The first int here, the key, is going to be what is the touch ID, and then the vector2 is, of course, going to be the starting position. We're going to call them active touches. Let's make sure we create the dictionary right away so we don't get any reference later on. And then in our for each, we are going to look uh, what state is the touch in. So if we just started, oh, if we just started pressing on the screen, 
then if touch.phase is equal to touch phase began, that means we're going to register that touch in our dictionary. The way we do this is by saying active touch dot add. Let's do touch finger ID and then touch dot position just like this. And that's all we need to do in here. We just need to start, uh, well, actually store the starting position. And then let's do it else if. So if we remove our finger off the screen, we'll do it else if touch dot phase is equal to touch phase dot ended. Then we also remove it from the dictionary. So active touch, let's do remove touch dot finger ID. Let's also make sure it is in the dictionary just before that in case something weird happens. So if active touch contains key, key is going to be touch dot finger ID, of course. So if there is one, let's delete it. And then finally, in the else statement, our finger is either moving or stationary. In both cases, we're going to be using the delta. So in both cases, let's use the delta from the original position. Let's just say, let's use a delta. That's going to be a little bit easier. And to do this, we are going to get the magnitude. So float magnitude is equal to zero. And then R is equal to touch that position minus active touch at touch dot finger ID. So we're making a delta. We're actually, uh, we're taking the current position of that finger minus where it was at the beginning. And then we're going to say mag is equal to R dot magnitude divided by something like 300 seems to work for me. And I'll explain what this number is in a second. Then R is equal to R dot normalize times magnitude. And then let's go ahead and just return it. So do we have a return R somewhere? Let's do return R um, down here. Okay, now it's time for some bit of explaining right here. The magnitude is basically the distance uh, you're going to be dragging your finger across. So if you start at the very beginning of your screen and your screen is say 800 pixel, then um, you drag your finger across, the magnitude is going to be 800. So this is what we calculate right here. And now the reason I'm actually doing it divided by 300 here is to give some, some, some kind of margin. So if you start dragging your finger at around, uh, well, if you drag your finger around 100 pixel, that's going to be a third of the speed you can actually go in that direction. If you go 300, that's the maximum speed. And if you go 400, it doesn't matter. It's going to be capped at 300 in this case. So this is some kind of dead zone, you could say. And here we have it. We have the player input right there. Now to test it out, since we do not have any game scene, we don't have a player in a game scene, we're actually going to be affecting the menu camera. So I invite you to open up the menu camera and we're going to be actually just writing something super simple, super quick right here in the update. We're going to be getting the inputs in here. So vector three inputs is equal to manager dot instance get player input. And what we're going to be doing right here is adding it up to the desired position. But we don't want to be uh, modifying desired position. We just want to be adding it up right here at the same place we do our lerp. So let's do a plus new vector three. Let's only use the um, the y axis also. So new vector three zero x and zero. Then we can also do time 0 0.01 since we have really messed up scaling right here. Uh, and the x here is actually meant to be input.x. Just like this. We could actually convert this into a float, actually. So let's do float, call this x, and let's just do a dot x here. Here we go. So that's the code we get in the camera. Let's actually give this a try. Now, the only way for you to give this a try is by plugging in your phone because there is no way for you to actually test this out uh, with the touches since touches don't work in the editor and there's also no way for you to test it out using the accelerometer because of course your computer doesn't have one so if you haven't already you should actually check out the tutorial i have on the channel that shows you how to plug in your um, your remote or you could actually build this to your phone and just give it a try what i'll do right now is i'll just put my remote on so let me just quickly build this up so my phone is plugged in right now. It has the Unity remote application running. I'm going to go under edit project settings and let's go under editor and make sure my devices here are set on any Android device. 
if I try starting the game right now, is it going to work? It doesn't seem like it work right now, so I'm going to quickly reset this, this uh, Unity instance. And it should actually work now that I've reset it, Unity. So let me just go into preloader, and I will tell you in a second. I do get the game on my phone right now, so let me actually try and drag my finger on the screen. Right now, I'm on my phone playing through remote, and it works super good. So as you can tell, it's moving right there. That's because I'm dragging my finger on the screen and these input actually works. This is actually where we're gonna be ending today's episode. In the next one, we're gonna be doing more tests. We're gonna be bringing on the webcam as well so you can see it in the real world. Uh, and we're gonna be working with the tilt control. This one was only the swiping controls. We didn't use the accelerometer, we didn't test that out. So that's what we'll be doing in the next one. Of course, please leave a like on the video if you enjoy, share it with your friends, give me a dollar, that would be so very cold and I could keep on making games uh, for the rest of my life using that awesome dollar you gave me. So, hi right, guys, so thank you so much for watching. I will be seeing you in the next one.